So for our edge finishes, we're going to use our seam finish pieces. So we have plain seam, double top stitch, single top stitch. And we should have another three sets of side front and center front pieces. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a facing. So we're going to sew these together again. And these are going to face each of these pieces so they'll be, act like a lining now normally the facing will have iron-on interfacing which will stiffen it and give it a bit more body and structure but one thing I want to point out before you stitch these together so for each facing we need to create a mirror image so here with this single top stitch one I want to sew my center front and my side front together so it is a mirror image. So here I have like a left side so I want to create a right side. So this would get sewn together so that when it faces this the seam allowances are both on the inside. So I would stitch it together along here. So when I opened it up, I had a finished right side. Okay. So what you can do is stitch all of these together, making sure that it is a mirror image to the outer fabric. Okay, so I've sewn all of the facing pieces together and ironed them open. So I should have a mirror image for each of my outer fabrics which have the seam finishes. So with the facing piece you don't need a top stitch or anything, you just need to stitch it together. So now that one will go with that one. And what you can do is you can put them together right sides facing just to partner them up and we can have a look at our edge finishes so for our plain seam we're going to do a seamless finish so what you do is you put these two together match your seams here And a way you can do that is by putting a pin through there, which I'll show you in a sec. So when you attach an outer fabric to a facing, it is really important that you match up your seams. And a way you can do that is by putting a pin directly through the seam and checking on the other side. So if it goes directly through the seam on the other side, you know it's matched up. You can see it's slightly off there. So I'm just going to realign that up. All right. And then to stitch them together, just one centimeter from the edge, straight stitch. Make sure you reverse. Keep your seams flat. You don't want them to fold up or anything like that while you're sewing. And you should sew up to your pin. Use your hand wheel to go over it, just so you don't break your needle. Okay, so just use your hand wheel to go over the pin and keep sewing around. Finish with a reverse stitch. Now because we have a slight curve here, we will need to clip that. So when we turn our work inside out, it turns out nicely. Take your pin out. 
But here we have a straight edge, so we don't need to clip that. So we're just going to snip every couple centimetres to about a mil or two before the seam allowance. Now what we need to do is our understitch and our understitch stops our facing from rolling out. So we don't want our facing to be seen. It should be on the inside and it should stay on the inside. You can see that my seams match nicely. So this is something you really want to try and work towards is getting your seams matching. So to do the understitch, this is going to be my facing. So I'm going to push my seam allowance towards the facing, keeping it nice and flat, pulling this open so my seam is nice and open. And then I'm gonna stitch close to that seam, but not too close, not too far away either. And that will hold my seam allowance flat and stop it from rolling out, stopping the facing from rolling out. Make sure you pull it nice and open. Try and keep your stitch nice and even. Now here where I've clipped it, you've got to make sure it's facing the right way. Nice and open and flat. Fold it and that's what it should look like. So we have a seamless finish at the top there. We have a facing with an understitch which stops it from rolling out. So our facing won't roll out like that. It should stay nice and flat. So what you would do now is iron this so it's nice and flat. Now for our next one, we're going to get the one with the single top stitch. So find the facing that matches that one. And again, you're going to pin it matching your seam allowances. And you're going to sew this exactly how you just sewed your other one. So I won't film that, but I'll film the next step. So stitch along here clip the curve, unfold it, do your understitch, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so for my second edge finish, I've attached the two together, I've done my understitch, and I've clipped the seam allowance in here, and then I'm gonna do a top stitch along the top. So I want the top stitch to be the same distance from the edge as this one is, so it's, it was a foot's width. I'm just gonna line up the edge of the presser foot, with the edge of my garment and stitch my top stitch. Now before you do this, you should make sure you've ironed it as well to keep it nice and flat. Just make sure this is nice and flat as you go over it. And go all the way to the end. And finish with a reverse stitch. That is your top stitched edge finish. You could do a double top stitch if you wanted to, or you could do a narrower one as well. Okay, so, so far we've got a seamless finish, top stitch, and now we're gonna do a gathered insert with our last one with the double top stitch. So for the gathered insert, you need a strip of calico that is 40 centimeters by five, and then you need to iron that strip in half all the way along. So I've got my strip 40 by 10, and I've ironed it in half, and we're gonna do a gathering stitch on the raw edge. 
So for gathering stitch, you still have it on straight stitch, but you just increase the length to four or how big your machine goes. And you're gonna create two stitch lines. So with gathering stitch, you don't reverse. You wanna have long tails. So make sure you've got long tails there. And the first stitch line we're gonna do on the raw edge is gonna be a foot's width. And stitch all the way to the end. And leave nice long tails again. So we've got nice long tails, we're reverse. And then next to that stitch line, let's get that out of the way, you're going to do another stitch line. Of, not quite, we're not going to do a foot width, we're actually going to line it up with the inside section of the presser foot, so this section here. So it's like in between the plastic and the metal where those points join or where this line is. And you're going to create another stitch line. long tails so I've got my two gathering stitch lines done now to actually gather I need to get the top thread from each stitch line I've done separate it from the bobbin thread and you hold them together and very carefully you pull the fabric along you have to be careful not to snap your threads. So this will take a little while, but what you want to do is you want to do one side and then you do the other side until you have an even gather, which is the width of this. So I've got to gather this until this whole strip is gathered to this width. So I'm going to do that off the camera and then I'll come back once I've done it. So I've gathered about half. So I'm going to go to this end, grab the top threads and gather the other half. Now, like I said, you've got to be super careful that you don't snap your threads. And just really carefully using your nail, I might just get that thread out of the way. Pull it along. Okay, so I finished gathering my insert. And it is a little bit longer, but that's okay because we can cut off the ends once, once we put it together. So what we need to do is with the right side, I might just move this. Right side of the fabric facing up. We need our facing piece with the right side facing down. And we're going to line up our raw edges. So this part here, see how it's not really quite gathered? I'm gonna have that overhanging at the center front. I'm gonna pin these two together, lining up all those raw edges. Now here I still need to make sure my seams line up and my raw edges line up. So you can see all layers are lining up there. So I can do the same technique, put my pin through the seam and check the other side. It's a little bit off. So I've got to move this over. Pop it back through. Still a little bit off. Okay, 
Ah, that's better. And untwisting this. Keep pinning. Making sure all those edges are lined up. Get those threads out of the way. that's all good to go and I can sew that together oops there's a little tuck there better fix that ah that's better so when I stitch this at one centimeter just make sure you put your straight stitch setting back to 2.5 So make sure you do a reverse stitch. It's going to be really important to hold your gathering in place. And take your pins out as you go. So when you're sewing, just make sure all those edges are lining up. See there? Super, super, super thick. So take your time and for the pin here use your hand we'll go over it okay we don't want to snap our needles finish with a nice reverse stitch So we should be able to turn that out and we should have our little gathered insert. So what we need to do now is we need to do our, ideally you'd have more gathering here, must have kind of come undone a little bit. So we need to do our understitch again. So that is, if you remember, pushing your seam allowance towards the facing. Now we know this is the facing because we have the top stitch finish here. And because this is so thick, just be careful when you go over these areas here. So seam allowance towards the facing. We've got a lot of extra threads here. We'll trim them after. And then we're stitching nice and close to that seam, but not too close too far away and we're pulling it so it's nice and open so that's our under stitch so now what we can do is we can iron this and we can unpick, so iron it and unpick this gathering stitch. So I'll do that now and show you what it should look like. So looking at our finished edge, we have our inserted gathered through. I've just trimmed the edges off. Now this technique you could use for a lace trim as well, would be the same. Um, I've got my under stitch on the other side to stop my facing from rolling out. So you should have three finishes, your gathered insert, your top stitch, and your seamless finish. 